Judge in this section. Our various partners in our bid to prevent uh, child abuse and neglect. <clears throat> As I look at the program, I see the word celebration. I think instead of celebration, um, we have every reason and every cause to be alarmed. The rate at which neglect and abuse of our children is happening. I'm not saying it's a new thing. This, has, this is something that has been going in our communities and societies for as long as we know, because we all know in the environment that we grew up, violence always prevailed. If we go back 10, 20, whatever years. Um, many of us, even as children, many of us have been uh, subjected to violence uh, at the hands of our parents, our, our guardians, our teachers as well. But we need to understand that we are, we are living in a very different socio-economic environment where uh, <clears throat> these uh, cases of abuse and neglect should set uh, the alarm bells ringing in our minds. And this morning it is indeed an honor for me to be here in your presence and having you as partners in our mission to ensure that we prevent the abuse and neglect of our children within our homes and within our very communities that we live in. And I also believe that as governments we cannot do this alone and that's why we have you as very able um, uh, positive partners with us so we can um, do our work in collaboration with each other's resources and uh, see how best we can tackle this. At the forefront of things here, we, I think we should admit that there is seriously a need for us to change the mindsets of the communities as to how it views children now. Okay? And, uh, and thank you on behalf of the Ministry for joining us um, in moving along with the rest of the world to work towards the prevent and abuse and of course the neglect of our children. We at the government level do not tolerate nor do we condone any form of abuse and neglect of our children. As mentioned, November 19th is the day set aside for PECAN, Prevention of Child Abuse and Neglect Day, and November 20th is the Universal Children's Day, I believe, which will be celebrated in schools across the country. And as, as I mentioned schools, the, the schools are equal partners with us in ensuring that uh, awareness is also created within schools and um, children are made aware of their rights as well as actions which tend to amount to neglect and abuse. So at this point, allow me to thank all our partners for the previous support and I look forward for the same support this year and in coming years to ensure that we are working on the same, same page. Ladies and gentlemen, it requires a collective effort. As I've mentioned, collective effort, collective actions, collective strategies to prevent and confront all forms of child abuse and neglect. But I believe it starts within the family. We need to ensure that we re-look at how our families are functioning now. Related to this child abuse and neglect, we also need to mention and address the increasing rate of domestic violence that prevails within our homes. And I believe that is a key contributing factor. If children grow up in homes where they see violence, where they are abused, of course they are going to grow up as adults, emulating the same, same behavior. And to tackle and prevent child abuse and neglect, we have to look at how our families are functioning. What is the role of families now? Where are we failing as parents and as adults and as guardians? And one of the key things we need to look at there is the structure of our families. We live in a society where more and more families are now moving towards being a nu being nuclear in structure. Okay, many of us must have grown up in extended family environments where we always had the support of our elders who, who, who played the role as guardians and caregivers. Now as more and more families are moving towards nuclear structure, there is tendency for children to be neglected, tendency for children to, to grow up with caregivers and, and at the same time probably the declining values that we see could be a reason. It could be a reason and as partners we need to relook really at that. How can we strengthen our family values? With more and more parents entering the workforce, I mean there used to be time when mothers were just confined 
to the role as caregivers, and we, we grow up in the care of our mothers and grandmothers. But if we look at the families, children are sent off to school, parents go off to work, and of course that's a need, there's a need. The family structures are changing, the societal structure is changing, but at the end of the day what matters to us is the values that we hold, especially in regards to women and children. So one of the foremost factors that we need to look at is strengthening our families, our family networks and support systems, and this is where we have partners. We have the faith-based organizations, we have the NGOs, we have the civil societies, and we have all government bodies working uh, across for this. And of course, the, the call to, to attention regarding child abuse and neglect is very serious, as increasingly we are given data that shows that more and more children are subjected to abuse, and, and more so with cases of sexual abuse coming up. One only has to flip the local media or watch the television to see the increasing number of child abuse and especially horrifying sexual abuse cases. And like I said, we will have to work together. And then at the same time, we need to ask, what is going wrong? The various campaigns we have, the various messages that come across, seriously, seriously, there is something wrong. What? Why is there a continued increase in sexual abuses? I mean, at a ministerial level, we, we receive cases not only written, but by phone calls. So this is what has happened. The agency in which we need to look at this is also equally important. The punishment meted out for these crimes is also important. So collectively, with the law enforcement agencies and with US partners, I think we, we really need to give this issue a more urgent, uh, more urgency, sorry, okay? And maybe, maybe I said, <clears throat> I'm not saying we will find a solution overnight, but maybe as we go along with our awareness campaigns, we will be make a difference. And if we can work together to make a difference in one child's life who has gone through this, we will be able to achieve results. We cannot allow children to suffer in silence, okay? Some of the families where these things happen are not financially, you know, um, equipped to deal with, especially in terms of counseling, medical assistance. And I think this is where we can pull up our resources and say, look, your child is our child. We cannot say it's your child. Every child of the country, we should treat every child as, as our child. If we really believe in this work, and I'm sure all of you in this room are as passionate about the children as, as we at the ministry level are. And that's where we need, really need to pull up and team up and treat every case that comes to us with agency. And um, if we can move on, like I said, we cannot simply say it's not existing. It's good. We are accepting it uh, through media and through, through data that is going to be presented to you uh, later on. We, we admit that this is a problem for us in the society and we have to c confront the realities of it. We cannot simply say, it's somebody else's business. No, 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 it doesn't work that way, okay? If violence happens in a home, it, we make it our priority. And because of that, we have some very good laws that protect our children, okay? The, the Child Welfare Decree of 2010 gives the ministry um, reasons to be, uh, um, reasons to be part of what's happening in the families where children are concerned. Okay? And uh, from statistics that we've got on reported cases of child abuse and neglect, in 2014, 48% of our child welfare cases were children who were sexually abused. 48% of cases that were brought to us was regarding sexual abuse. Okay? For some of us, it may remain a data. It just remains a statistics, 48%. But if you really go down and look at where these, 40, where these children are and, and the, the trauma that they go through, what life they are leading now, what support has been given to them, I, I'm sure we'd be alarmed at the lack of support that must have been given to them. So the reason for us here is to increase our support to these victims. Okay? Words are not just enough. Words are just not enough. We will have to put our words into practical action so that we can assist these families where there are children who have been subjected to violence, children who have been subjected to abuse and neglect, and seriously with sexual abuse cases, because many families are not, like I said, equipped to deal with this. This morning I received a call. Actually, the call was last night, so this morning again the call came regarding a case. 
the family is finding it difficult to control this, this boy. Okay? He was subjected to sexual abuse a couple of months ago. And the mother says, I don't know how to deal with him. And actually, I was not in a position to tell her how to deal with it because I'm not a counselor. But listen, look, okay? We will try to find out how best we can find counseling support and we have the, one of the offices on the case right now. And I'm sure there are so many out there who do not know how to deal with this and campaigns such as this. And our partnership in campaigns such as this is going to provide a pathway to these families on how to deal with it. Okay? I mean, as parents, are we, are we ready to deal with a situation like this? Should it, God forbid, happen in our own homes? Some of us may be, some of us may not be. So as we reach out to communities through our activities that we are going to carry out uh, to ensure that we try to stop child sexual abuse, especially child sexual abuse, we will need to provide the right information to families and communities here as to which doors they can knock on. Many of the time, especially in rural communities, and I'm sure you'll agree with me that many cases go unreported. Okay? Many cases go unreported, so our job is to ensure that we advise communities as to where reports could be lodged, what steps could be taken, what help is available along the line. And we should not allow families and children to suffer. And, and, and sadly, a lot of cases that go, are reported, the, the abuse is inflicted not by strangers. Um, there may be strangers, but it's, it's somebody within the community. It's somebody who's close to the family. And can you imagine seeing the face of the perpetrator around you all the time? Sometimes perpetrators may, may be out and about and you see the face. The, the, the trauma that the, the parents go through. And worse still, if the perpetrators are in the family, eh? a close blood related or, and we've even had cases where we have grandparents, grandfathers and uncles and things do come up. So that is very, very serious and we take it very seriously. And like I said, we will have to deal with this more urgently. We have to give these cases more priority. So this is where the health comes in, education comes in for awareness, health comes in for counseling and, and the medical side of it. The police comes up with agency in dealing with cases. The ministry and the counseling agencies come to provide counseling support and then other agencies can come up with other support. So, like I said, financial support is also needed by these families because when it happens, they're just not prepared. Sometimes families have to relocate, especially in case of, in case of rape. How can you live in a society where, where your child has been raped? Okay? You, life has to go on. For the rest of us, life has to go on, but for the family, some of them would want to be relocated. So we will have to look at strategies where we can help these families in this, rather than allowing them to live within the same community. And I'm sure you'd agree with me how communities judges such victims, eh? the judgmental attitude, that label, ah, oh, that is a rape victim, oh, that, that boy was sexually abused, or that, that, that's the mindset that we need to change. And when we say their children is our children probably, that's the way we're going to do that. If we start treating every children as our children and not subject them to be judged of what has happened to them because it was no fault of this. Why should victims be blamed and judged? And we do that. As a society, like I said, we really need to shift our mindsets more towards supporting, providing support to the victims. And in line with that, um, earlier this year, the Child Helpline, Fiji's first national child helpline was uh, launched uh, by the ministry in partnership with the Medical Services Pacific. And this was an avenue to allow children who are subjected to such abuse, neglect, to report cases. Okay? And uh, we have received um, over 5,000 calls, but unfortunately not all the calls were seeking help. Some were trying to test the line, some were actually making prank calls, there were some silent calls, but we received close to 400 genuine calls where, where children genuinely needed assistance. Okay? So this is a machinery that has been set by the government to ensure that help is provided to the children. At the moment, it is a 12-hour uh, helpline, 
But yes, we are progressing into making it a 24-hour helpline so that any time of the day or night a child feels that his safety and welfare or well-being is compromised, he or she can pick up the phone, 1325, Vodafone, Digicel or telecom lines. That's it. A simple appeal to the, to the children out there, please do not abuse our lines. Do not uh, um, cram or jam the lines because there may, may be a genuine child out there who really needs our help. And uh, on that note, yes, the, the slogan uh, for the, that uh, helpline is uh, you are never alone when you're near a phone. Eh? And uh, I'm sure every household has access to, to any of these uh, three service providers. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, we are also committed to raising standards generally in, in the nation's school. You must be aware that corporal punishment has been banned, okay? And uh, the government has strong, has strong investment uh, in our children. Uh, uh, bulk of the budget goes to the education sector so that we are able to promote a more knowledge-based society and uh, where, where children or <coughs> Uh, allowed to, you know, be part of decision making as well, and um, uh, if we can go back and see <clears throat> why there is a need for us to, uh, for this campaign to be successful, there is there is a need for us to first uh, understand this campaign at home level, at the home front, and of course again the role of parents and guardians comes in, and. Uh, uh, let us change our mindset and show warmth and understanding to our children. Let us listen to our children. Okay? Let us see. Some, at times, we really need to see things from their perspective as well. I mean, as adults, a lot of times, I think we are also guilty of imposing a lot of things on the children. This is how it's supposed to be done. You have to do this, you know. Maybe if we see changes in the way our children behave, it wouldn't harm us to sit and talk to them. Let's listen to what they want. And like I said, you have to agree that the environment that we grew in and the environment that is prevailing now is a totally different environment. We, we claim to be living in a very modernized world and a very modernized society, of course. Moder modernization comes with its, its challenges and the positive side of things as well. And so we'll have to deal with that. And uh, another thing as parents, uh, we really need to be aware of where our children are many at times. Okay. The timetable of our children, what time they're supposed to be home, where they're whereabouts, what company they keep, you know? What, what mode of transport do they take? Are you sure they're taking a bus to school? We, we need to, sometimes we take things for granted. Okay, we are so busy, we, we head off to work and we know the child will go to school. It, it wouldn't do us harm to check on, okay, if, if that's really happening. Like teachers, uh, teachers also need to be very alert as to see if there are changes in the behavior of the child. If the child is too aloof or the child is uh, always upset or something like that, we need to be alert about the little changes that our children go through. And uh, of course, we, it's our responsibility as parents and guardians to ensure that we always leave children in the care of trusted and responsible adults. How well do you trust your caregiver? How well do you trust your neighbor when you leave your children there, when you, when you have activities that take most of your time? How well do you know your child's friends? How well do you know the community around you? How well do we know that? Okay, so, I mean, this is where we all will have to uh, rise up and make a difference because this year's theme is basically talking about it's your turn to make a difference to stop child abuse. And who's this you? It's all of us, eh? all of us um, around us. And then sometimes we are so busy, like I said, we do not care what's happening in the other home. You hear children crying out, you hear children being beaten. How many times have we actually opened the doors and windows and, and tried to stop that? Some of us think, it's not my business. Okay, but I think it is our business. If you really care about the children, it is our business, whether it's my child or the neighbor's child, if the child is being beaten. If you see the child being picked and dropped by strangers, that should be a cause of concern for us and we can notify parents on that. And, um, and then again, like um, we can use, uh, uh, teachers would be well equipped to, to talk to children about uh, the tools that they have to protect themselves when they're in danger 
and how can they confide in adults? I think that's lacking. How, how, do, we, how do we get our children talking to us? How do we get children talking to us? And when I was a teacher, I used to ask my Form 7 students, when was the last time you had dinner together? When was the last time you had breakfast together? Forget about lunch, we are all so busy. I don't know, if it's happening in the homes, well and good. Okay, that shows parental responsibility. If we can gather the family together for at least one meal, a very simple step, one meal and sit and talk. What's happening now? Children are too busy on their social media. We parents are too busy trying to budget how the next week is going to go. Oh, how these bills are going. That, those are realities of life and you'll have to accept that. How much time do we actually, why, why do we suddenly push it to the teacher? I was a teacher and I know. As a teacher, we used to deal with everything. Why is your uniform dirty? Why are you not wearing shoes? Where is your lunch? How come your bus fare voucher is wet? Things like, why are you coming to school late? I mean, a lot of pressure is on the teachers now. So as parents, let us share that burden. I mean, they are our children, of course. The teachers are educators, of course, they are caregivers as well. But bulk of the responsibility should be us. Feeding them, putting them to school, making sure they come home safe. Walking around towns and cities about 9 o'clock, I mean, back in the West, 8 o'clock, every child should be, should be in school. And we would be alerted by police, okay, there's this child at the, at the pool table. But here, as I walk around, I see a lot of children. I don't know what the school hours are. Is it 8 to 4, or 9 to 4, or 10 to 4, whatever the story is. But if you walk around the streets of, of the capitals here, or maybe go to Lod you'll see children. And then you question, why are they in, on the streets? Maybe they've just finished the exam, or maybe they're going to the doctors, or there are some other reasons. So these are some of the things we need, need to look at. And probably this is where they get into company and stuff, and you know how perpetrators are always looking around. You never know which, where, where, they, where, where children are safe and where they're not safe. So being alert at all times. If, if, if my child comes to school, uh, come home at about five or six o'clock, I should be worried. I should be worried. So these are the realities of the society that we live in now. And uh, there could be various reasons for that, and I'm sure we can all sit and talk and say, okay, this is, this is not the only way to go forward, but there are other ways by which we can tackle this problem. And um, finally, if I may just end by saying, uh, many of our children end up being victims of sexual abuse and neglect because, as we mentioned, the home and the environment that they live in, the communities that they live in, um, are changing and um, instead of the love and understanding, the care, compassion, all these things that should exist, uh, it's sort of becoming rather cold and volatile for the security. And uh, well, let us all work together to complement the development of our children from infancy to, to being adults, okay, where they can look after themselves. And um, basically the key to ensuring that we equip a child holistically to be responsible and make informed choices on the boundaries that surrounds them lies in the hands of parents and guardians. I urge all of us to be responsible and play our part for a brighter future for our children, our future leaders. The principle is very simple. We must put our children first as our priority. Ladies and gentlemen, as parents and guardians, and as stakeholders, we have to accept that times have changed Times are different now, okay? And that is something that we cannot change. We will have to move with that. Living in an increasingly modernized environment has brought its benefit, challenges, and of course, the social evil that surrounds us. And as adults, as parents, as guardians, as mothers and fathers, as elder brothers, as elder siblings, we all have a huge responsibility and, and the impact on the lives of our children. And with these few words, um, it is my pleasure now to declare the Prevention of Child Abuse and Neglect campaign with the theme, It's Your Turn to Make a Difference, Stop Child Sexual Abuse. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for those...